find that. That's not sketchy at all. Hello and welcome everybody to part two of the electric surfboard build. If you missed the part one where we built this outline with the 3D printer, go and check that out. You can also see some of the specifics on how it'll all come together in the end. But let's get right into this video. So in this part two, we're going to be covering how I added a lot of the wooden components to the electric surfboard build. Now starting with some of the components, this is five millimeter thick plywood. Nothing too special about it. Um, it was cheap. I got it from Lowe's. What we'll be doing is using a waterproofing spray to waterproof this along with a layer of epoxy to strengthen it when I end up using it with the board as you see here. Now as you can tell, cutting out the pieces for this board was really not too hard. All I had to do is trace out the edge of the board and then cut it with about an inch offset. That way it fits within the grooves of that 3D printed board. Okay, we're going to speed through some of this cutting. One thing I did want to say is that this wood was really easy to use. It was nice and light. I didn't have to worry about overweighting the board. I could have gone with maybe a quarter inch piece or maybe even a half inch, which may would, would have had some good attributes, but I'm happy I went with the lighter wood in this case, which I will strengthen with epoxy at the very end. You'll see later that all the electronics will sit within the board, so nothing will be poking out of the top, keeping it nice and flush, which was a big goal of this project. For the epoxy, I went with this Total Boat Flex um, resin. Now this stuff allows for bending without being brittle. It works really well for this application, one because it goes well with wood, and also this type of epoxy is rated to adhere to most plastics which was kind of a unique thing with this particular epoxy. Uh, after some testing before I ended up applying it, it did a great job adhering. I didn't have any delamination at all. And as you can see here, I did use uh, clamps to keep that board in place. Um, working with this epoxy, it's always a bit of a learning curve because you're not sure how thick or how thin it's going to be and how well you're going to be able to work with it. But this stuff was nice and thick. Um, I didn't have any issue um, applying and keeping everything together. As you can see, I used some clamps uh, to keep that in place with some parchment paper in between, which doesn't stick to this epoxy, which made it just really easy to work with. For the front piece of the board here, the groove that's supposed to hold that piece of wood wasn't quite perfect as far as being flush with that board. So I ended up taking that already thick epoxy and adding a silica to it, which made this really thick peanut butter-like paste. As you can see here, I'm applying it, which really helped fill in some of the, uh, the pockets that that wood created, not having that perfect seal. And again, here you can see I'm just clamping all that down, making it uh, sort of squish out some of that thickened epoxy. That way it made a nice waterproof seal around that edge even though it wasn't quite flush with the plastic edge. So getting that initial wood in place, I will be going back and filling in some of the pockets and sanding this to be nice and nice and flush with the plastic part of the board. But this was a very good start and we'll keep everything in place really nicely so I can keep on building until I get to that finalization of the project. So now we're going to start some of the internal structures to give the rider some support. Obviously that five millimeter thick plywood is not going to hold up to somebody standing on it um, with their full weight, especially if it's concentrated through, let's say, their heel or if they hit a bump in the water, that kind of a thing. So throughout the internals I added, uh, I guess you would call it ribbing, with the uh, wood there. I will add a layer of epoxy to the top and bottom of the five millimeter sheets, um, but this is gonna add just a lot of strength to it overall without adding very much weight at all. 
So here we go, we're going to add one of the first 3D printed parts aside from, of course, the rim of the board. So here we have a the mounting uh, plate and also the motor mount that will hold the motor and propeller and whatnot. So I'm just kind of getting this centered on the board so we can sort of embed this in the board and epoxy it in with uh, fiberglass as well. Uh, the biggest challenge here was making sure this was very centered. Um, I started off using a, um, as you can see, that uh, cord that goes across the middle of the boat. Issue there was it would roll for me just a little bit, and if I'm just a quarter inch off, I'm going to be turning un unintentionally in the water. So the amount of measuring and remeasuring I'd end up doing with this thing was just crazy. Once I did find center, um, I did just simply trace out the outer lines of that uh, mounting plate. And then later you'll see the sort of extruded parts of that plate will come through uh, the actual the inside into the outer part of the board and give a nice flush area for that motor mount to hook up to it. I will admit, cutting through this bottom board was a bit of a uh, bit of a hurdle mentally, just because this was kind of the point of no return. I couldn't have messed this up or moved it after this without replacing that whole bottom board, so I just had one shot at it. But I think it's going to end up turning out really nicely here, as you'll see. And here you can see, uh, kind of seeing how the fit is going to work with it coming through the bottom of the board and ending up nice and flush for that mounting surface. So knowing that this part is going to be holding all the stress from the motor and maybe in the future even like a hydrofoil type setup, I knew I had to make it nice and strong. Um, I did use a single layer of 4 ounce fiberglass along with plenty of that epoxy again. I think this is going to make a nice strong mounting surface. I will be adding some wooden panels next to it as you'll see just to further strengthen and sort of disperse that stress from the motor or from future attachments. I will say using this thickened epoxy uh, it is a little tougher to wet that fiberglass. Um, if you do plan on using the same epoxy for a similar project just know that you're going to need a lot of it um, and it's going to take a little bit to soak through. Now as you'll see here, the fiberglass is going across that entrance point for the mount. I will be cutting that out later um, once that epoxy cures so that I can get the T-shaped bolt in there to bolt on the motor. Okay, so we're getting into more of the internal structures of this boat project. So starting off with that electronics box, this will be in a basically an internal box, which will have a one half inch uh, plywood cover that will be removable so that we can access it. Now to, like I said before, give some strength to that uh, motor mount, we're going to add some five millimeter plywood to each side of it and then heavily epoxy those in place and this is like I said just to disperse some of the stress from the motor and also give some support for the rider. <laughs> 
Now I ended up using these clamps to keep those two five millimeter boards flush up against that half millimeter plywood. And this is so that in the future when I add some weather stripping for the ceiling, everything is nice and tight. Now even with all the epoxy that I used and the multiple pieces of wood, this part, or as what, what you can see here right now, this was actually only weighing about 20 pounds. Now most production type boards of this type, with the battery, the electronics, and everything else, they weigh about 60 pounds. So I'm still well within my goal of being sort of in that market level of weight. Um, I didn't think I could get it to be lighter, that's for sure, just based on the components I had to use, but uh, I did want to keep it manageable to not have this brick in the water. And that just about does it for all the supports. Um, I don't plan on adding really anything else for the internals of the board, just adding some waterproofing spray and just reinforcing all those epoxy bonds before I cover it up. All right, so that about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching. The next video, we're gonna focus more on course finishing this a little bit more. Uh, we got just about everything into the internals of the board that I want. Uh, I will be adding a waterproof spray and of course adding the top layer and cutting out these holes for the electronic box um, and then the motor electronic box there. So that's the come. But uh, for the most part I really like how this has turned out so far. It weighs about 20 pounds. Um, I did weigh it on a scale of right about 20 pounds which is right on track for a board this big. Um, I think it's going to be really fun once I finish it up. I'm very getting more and more excited about this, of course. Um, in the next video, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about more electronics. We're going to talk a lot more about the 3D printed parts that are going into the motor and thruster setup, um, and also painting this board. There's just a lot more coming, so think about subscribing if you haven't. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun getting this into the water. I'm hoping I can do that before fall comes and things get too cold, but. Uh, I'll just keep on trucking at it. Anyhow, thank you again for watching and I hope you enjoyed and consider subscribing if you've enjoyed it so far. Um, otherwise, have a good day. I'll see you next video.